Oh, what's up, buddy? You want to learn how to create a video call app using Agora? Are you talking to me? Who else would I be talking to? We're the only two in the call. Oh, all right, then I'm down. Let's do it. So I don't know about you, but creating a video call app seems like a pretty daunting task. There's tons of data that needs to be transferred using different video codecs and all that stuff. And I don't really know the first thing about it. But the nice thing is we have Agora that makes it super easy for you. So in this video, we're going to go through a one-to-one -one video call app, just like the one you saw in the intro, and teach you exactly how to do it. So let's get into it. So first things first, you need an Agora account and be able to get into the Agora console so you can create an Agora project. Now creating a project is pretty simple. You just click new project. We'll call it video call. We'll start up in testing mode. So after that's done, it's gonna sync to the SDRTN, which is the software defined real time network, which is how all the magic behind Agora happens. And we can wait those two minutes and then refresh and hopefully we'll see it up. And actually while I was doing that, we can go enable app certification so we could use a temporary token. So we click enable here, confirm. And once we enabled these, we want to disable the no certificate mode. So that's not actually necessary. You could test without it, but I wanted to show how to generate a temporary token that you can use. And then there'll be a link in the description how to generate a real token that you will need in order to use it for a production app. So then we're able to generate a temporary token for an audio slash video call app. You put in the channel name. We're going to use first channel. Now we're going to generate temporary token. So you have your app ID and then your temporary token. And this is, these are the two values we're going to need for our application. Okay, so we have the two prerequisites finished, the app ID and the token. Again, I want to reiterate, you can test without a token, but it's probably better to test with a temporary token. And then if you're running a production app, you want to be generating tokens on the servers. And there'll be a link in the description of how to do that and a video coming out for that as well. So like any Flutter project, we need to make sure we have our dependencies in here. The two that we're going to need is the Agora RTC engine. And right now it's on version 3.3.3. .3. And then the permissions handler. And then we can go work in our main file. So the app we're going to start with is a very simple one. We have a material app that wraps a my app. And here we have one state that we're going to hold and it's the remote UID. Then we're going to have an init state where we run this function called init for Agora. Right now it's empty, so we're going to do all the initialization together. And then for the actual UI, we just have a stack widget with, with the remote video taking up the whole backside of the screen and then a top left aligned preview of your own screen. So just like you saw in the little cute introduction. So the local preview currently has nothing but a container. And then this one will display, please wait for a remote user to join if there's no remote user, and then if there is, we'll actually display that user. So right now our app looks like this with please wait remote user to join. And if we really care about grammar, we might update that to please wait for the remote user to join. So let's get into the meat of this. We're going to need four imports for this. First one is using permission handler, which just requests permissions from the device to use a microphone and the camera in our case, which by the way, might need additional setup for Android and iOS. So check the documentation, which is also linked in the description. I think you don't really need to do anything for Android. Like this might be overkill because for me, it works without any, any changes in the Android manifest, but just in case documentation says to do it. So maybe you should. And then for these, we definitely need to add an in info P list, the permissions for camera and microphone for iOS. So in the initialization for Agora, we're gonna first ask for the permissions. So there we go. We're gonna need the microphone and the camera permission. And you can do this manually, but using the permissions handler makes it a little bit easier and less code. So now to get to the actual Agora part of this. So Agora provides this RTC engine, which stands for real-time communication engine. This engine basically drives everything you need to do with Agora. So we first wanna create that engine so we could actually use it. You do that using RTC engine dot create with config and then pass in a RTC engine config with our app ID that we have over here. So this is the app ID we get from the console, pass it in, create an engine with that, and then move on to the next part. Since we are going to be doing a video call app, we need to enable video on this engine. And then the main part of this whole engine is the set event handler function. So this function pretty much handles all the events that can happen on the engine. You could look through the list of all the possible events here. There's error, join channel success, all these things. We're going to only use three for this specific tutorial, and that's join channel success, the user join callback, and the user offline callback. So this first callback is when the local user with this specific UID joins. 
This next one is when the remote user joins or anybody else joins the specific channel. And then this last one, user offline, is when the remote user leaves the channel. So if you remember, we had an integer for the remote UID that we're going to be handling. So I want to put that in a set state and just set it to the UID that we get here. And then our UI will update with whatever remote UID joined the channel. And then if they leave that specific channel, we want to set that back to no and also update the UI. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's most of the handling for this. The only thing left to do is to join the actual channel that we have created. If you remember, we called the channel first channel. We have a temporary token for that. And to actually join it, we want to join channel. This is all the information you're going to need. We The token, we actually have it named the same thing. So token works fine. Channel name, we had first channel. Optional info, we could set to null. And then we could set the optional UID to zero as well. And there we go. Now to fill out the rest of it, the UIs, these two imports we had over here was the RTC local view and the RTC remote view. So here we can return RTC local view. And then instead of this container, we can return RTC remote view. And the remote view needs to take in a UID, which we have ready for us, which is the remote UID. All right, there you go. That's the complete app. So let's run it. And actually, my computer defaults to the DSLR camera right here. So I'm going to have to turn off this camera so we could actually see that this is working. So there we go again. Since this is a DSLR, it acts a little weird. We can do a transform to rotate the camera. But if you're not using a DSLR camera, I'm pretty sure you're going to be OK with just the normal code. And then just to be extra certain, we can run this on my iPhone here. So we do see both sides of it. So. There we go. Everything's working beautifully, just like we had at the beginning. So now let me write some code because I'm too lazy to set that camera back up and I'll be right back for the outro. All right, so it really is as simple as that. Let me walk through the code one more time to make sure we got everything covered. You first want to make sure you add your dependencies using the Agora RTC engine and the permissions handler. There might be some stuff you need to do for iOS in the info.plist, enable camera and stuff like that. Then if we go into the main file, we want to make sure we have our app ID and token. So remember, if you're testing, you don't necessarily need a token. But if you're going to run a production app, then you need to generate a token. And there's a link in the description to teach you how to do it. Then the main logic behind Agora is within this RTC engine where we create it. We initialize it here. After we get the permissions, we enable video since we're doing a video call. We set some event handlers whenever either local user joins or remote user joins or a remote user leaves. Then we join the channel using our token that we created and the channel name, which the token was created for that specific channel name. And then we just display it. So it really is as simple as that in like just about a hundred lines of code and I, we could have definitely made it a lot more concise than this. We have created a complete video call app using Flutter and Agora. If you wanna learn more about what Agora can do and go more in depth on the topics we cover here today, make sure to check the links in the description if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and see you next time.